Hello there, this is just an introduction video to my little Jeebazaya Lamia. And if you're wondering where that name comes from, it's an ancient Greek demon. However, I don't know if that's how you pronounce the name, because I've never heard it said. So if you know how it's pronounced, feel free to tell me. She is a four and a quarter inch female Jeebazaya, red form. I have no idea how old she is, but I, I doubt she's more than, say, th three or four years old. She's an absolute lovely specimen. I've had no trouble with her whatsoever, other than your typical Rosea problems of fasting. She did used to kick hairs when I first got her, but then again when I first got her she was used to living in an enclosure no bigger than this tub here, and this is actually the tub I used to bring her home. On uh, December 17th, 2011, a very good friend of mine was very kind enough to take me to a pet shop called Wolf Aquatics, and in that shop I saw many things. The entire ground floor was devoted to tropical fish. Upstairs was devoted to reptiles and invertebrates. They had loads of snakes, boa constrictors, pythons, you name it. They had chameleons and other lizards, like bearded dragons. They even had a caiman. And there was also a stand full of tarantulas with a very, very big tarantula on the top shelf, which I think could have been the tea stermy. That thing was huge. Somewhere around the middle of the shelf there was also a small female G uh, Pee Regalis. And uh, there was also four different Roseas. Two red form, two normal form. The normal forms were both female, and the red forms was a male and one unsexed. But I was intent on getting the female red form, and the moment I saw her, I knew instantly that Lamia was a girl. I didn't see a ventral shot, I didn't see a dorsal shot, and I saw her from the front. And I knew straight away she was a girl. So without hesitating, I picked her up and I bought her. After I set up her enclosure, I put her in, obviously. And the first thing she did was settle down and actually absorb moisture from the substrate. At that point, I wasn't aware that you shouldn't give Gerizea's wet substrate. But she seemed okay with it until I caught her climbing the tank. I think the only good thing about that was the fact that it confirmed the fact that she was a female because I saw her at the gas strip for her. And it is true that uh, Gerizeas are known for being unpredictable. You could have two identical specimens. One could be extremely calm like mine. The other could be an absolute evil monster. The type that leaps out and grabs your feeding tongs. There are videos of that on YouTube, I'd suggest you have a look. It's actually quite impressive. Luckily though, my Jeeva's hair is extremely calm. When I first got her, she used to flick hairs a lot. And she quickly developed a bull patch which really made me sad. But since her molt she's not kicked hairs once. She's actually been very calm. She's so calm in fact she can sit on my shoulder for hours while I watch the TV or play on the computer. And of course when she starts moving that's when I keep an eye on her. I've already told one of my uh, subscribers, Nick, that uh, she's like a ninja. 
She could be on my shoulder one second and at the foot of the bed the next. It's like, how the hell did you get there? But yeah, she's a lovely little girl. She's actually very calm to the point I can pick her up with one hand. I prefer not to. Because, to be honest, I don't like it. Pretty sure she doesn't either. What I usually do is lay one hand in front of her and gently coax her with the other hand. Like it's a demonstration of just how calm she is. See? Lama is my first t ever tarantula, and she is the realization of a dream that I had ever since I was eight years old. At my primary school, we had a wildlife exhibition turn up, and they had like, chinchillas, reptiles, and you say. All the girls wanted to pet the chinchillas. All the boys wanted to have a look at the reptiles and stick insects. But me, I was the only one who went straight to the tarantula. It was a tarantula no bigger than this one. I held her. And she actually started webbing on my hand, which I thought was very cool. And since then, I was bugging my mother constantly asking her and begging her to get me a tarantula but nothing came of it she actually got me a skin from her friend's Jirazea who was named Giles Giles was a large female but I guess he didn't know what the gender was hence the name Giles but since holding that tarantula the age of eight, I have desperately wanted a tarantula of my own. It's a shame that it took me 21 years to actually realize that dream. But to be honest, before then, it was just not possible. I had way too many problems, and I just could not afford it. This is the skin that belonged to Giles and is roughly five and a half inches probably a little more it's a huge spider and has had a, a few accidents with the legs because it's just so damn brittle you have to be extremely careful in handling it I never actually saw this spider in person but my mum was kind enough to actually obtain this from a friend of hers. And its fangs are enormous. Let's see if I can actually show you. This is a shot of her, f of, yeah, her fangs. And Well, you just compare those to the size of my thumb. They are big. I seriously would not want to get bitten by this spider. Uh, I think you can kind of make out an epigastric furrow right there. However, I'm not entirely certain. Because it's just so mangled up. That could be one of the book lungs for all I know. This is Lamia's skin from her only malt with me so far. I see a huge difference between the two skins. And I've always got a long way to go before she's anywhere near that size. Let's see if I can turn her over. Again, I love the fangs on tarantulas. 
I don't know why. There's just something about them. As I said before, I've been fond of tarantula since I was eight years old. And it's actually twenty years, not twenty one, that I actually desperately wanted a tarantula. And from two thousand nine onwards, my interest in tarantulas basically exploded from watching various videos made by Trash the Guy nineteen seventy six and John thirty eight hundred. And John's Mythbuster videos were incredible. Incredibly in depth and knowledgeable. And thanks to him I was inspired to buy tarantulas, as I'm sure a great many other people were. Unfortunately, being the source of my knowledge, I was pestering him a lot. Because every time Lamy didn't eat for long periods of time, I was freaking out. And that is the reason why the G. rosea is not a good beginner species. They're lovely, don't get me wrong. But new beginners should start with a species that is actually reliable with, in regards to feeding and temperament. This is why the Brachypelma genus is actually highly recommended. Those species of tarantula are actually incredibly calm most of the time and eat a lot. Now, as John says, individuals do vary, and this is exceptionally true. As some brachypelmas can be calm, others can be highly skittish. At the moment, my brachypelma has no idea what she wants to be. Feeding habit-wise, she's actually a bit strange. She has varying tastes. She can want crickets one minute, and then she'd be partial to grasshoppers or superworms. I prefer not to get superworms anymore because more often than not, she refuses to eat them and then I have to dig them out. Obviously I don't have to dig them out, but I want to dig them out because I don't want to keep any prey item in with her. As I've heard that it can actually stress the tarantula out and to be honest I don't want her to go through that. So if I can avoid any stress then I will avoid it. But whenever I give her any food, more often than not she'll just ignore it. Although sometimes she actually pounces on the food, grabs it, flexes her fangs, drops it and then walks away. Which is really annoying. At the moment she prefers crickets of a certain size, if they're too big or too small. She just won't do it. However, I have coaxed her into eating some grasshoppers recently. And on Monday, I gave her a grasshopper and she did the same thing. She walked up to it, grabbed it, flexed her fangs, and I thought, oh, bloody hell. Turned my back for a second and I heard a crunch. Went back to check on her. And what did she do? She ate it. She held it in her fangs and then walked back into her burrow and ate it. Which, to be honest, I was very happy about. I was ecstatic. Every time she eats, it's like a celebration. Because, watch, Lomia eating food is rare. Unlike my bee smithy, who is guaranteed to eat all the time, every time. Unless she's molting. And here's Lamia. Quite happily sitting on my hand. She's got a nasty habit of pooping. 
every now and then, but that's to be expected really. Plus I've noticed that every time she poos, she wants more food, so in a way it's a good thing. But this is definitely a good shot of her abdomen as you can see. No bald spot, and I'm very happy about that. The strange thing is, she doesn't look like your average red form rosea. I've seen red forms that have red hair all over. If anything, she looks like um, an in-between. Sometimes she looks like a normal colour, and other times she looks like a red colour. It's really strange. It's not a bad thing. I don't care what colour she is, because I love her to bits. She is an absolute angel, and I wouldn't change her for anything. Well, thank you for watching. At some point I'll be doing another video about my bee smithy. Thank you.